all chemical reactions and the breaking of existing bonds and the reforming of new bonds will either absorb or release energy during that process. And a balanced equation, besides telling us the proper ratio of substances to one another, reactants and products, it can also give us an idea of how much heat energy is going to be absorbed or released for a given amount of reactant or product. This is known as the heat of reaction, and heat many times is symbolized by a lowercase q. A subscript R denotes that we are talking about the heat of a reaction. Now, if heat is being absorbed by the reaction, in other words, if it's an endothermic reaction, then Q sub R will have a positive value, whereas if we talk about an exothermic reaction where heat is being released from the reaction, then Q sub R will take on a negative value. So the sign of Q sub R is going to tell us the direction, whether it's an endothermic or an exothermic reaction, and then the magnitude in the unit is going to tell us the actual amount of heat energy that is either exiting or being absorbed. If we take the combustion of methane gas, we see that besides the carbon dioxide and water as products as we would typically expect, we also see represented in this equation an energy component. And we don't always see this in an equation, but when we do, it can be an, a way of visually identifying from the equation whether we are talking about an exothermic or an endothermic reaction. Now, in thinking about the combustion of methane, which is natural gas, we would probably all quite easily classify it as an exothermic reaction because there is light energy given off as well as heat energy, which is why it's used as a fuel source. And so we can see that for every one mole of methane that is burned, we get an output of 890 kilojoules of energy. So the heat of reaction would be identified as negative 890 kilojoules. And again, the sign simply represents the direction of the energy. Is it being subtracted from the system? Is it leaving the system it, as it does in an exothermic reaction? Or does it need to be added to the reaction as it would in an endothermic reaction? Now the ratio that we see here, the 1 for the CH4, the 1 mole CH4, and the 890 kilojoules, that's just like our mole to mole ratio in mass mass stoichiometry problems. If we change the amount of material of reactant that we are burning, that is going to have an impact on how much energy we can get out and hence the heat of the reaction. So if we have a, an amount of material that is you know, not what the equation specifies, it's not one mole exactly or two moles, whatever the equation might be, we can still determine the amount of energy that would be produced using that balanced equation, which includes the energy component. The process for solving these problems will be very similar to what we've done in mass-mass stoichiometry problems, except the mole-to-mole -mole ratio step, where we before went from moles of starting material to moles of final material. Now, instead of going to final material, we're going to change to energy, and so it will be a mole-energy ratio. For the methane example that we just looked at, the ratio would be 890 kilojoules for every one mole of CH4. And if you notice, both of these numbers still come from the balanced chemical equation. The coefficient for CH4 was 1, and the value for the energy was 890. Taking a look at a practice problem, the question is how much heat would be generated by the reaction of 1.99 grams of sodium peroxide with water? In looking at the balanced equation, we see it takes two moles of sodium peroxide plus two moles of water, yielding four moles sodium hydroxide plus oxygen gas, one mole of it, and that would also yield 215.76 kilojoules of energy. Now, just from the way the reaction is set up, we see that energy is shown on the product side, so this is indicating that it's going to be a, an exothermic reaction, and we would expect Q sub R to be negative. If we only have 1.99 grams of sodium peroxide to start with, 
we need to set up our stoichiometry problem with the 1.99 grams Na2O2. First convert that to moles with the molar mass for sodium peroxide, which would be 78.0 grams per mole. The next step then in mass-mass stoichiometry would have been a mole-to-mole -mole ratio, but here we're asked about heat energy instead. So instead of moles final material on top, we have kilojoules on top and moles of our starting material, Na2O2, on the bottom. Note the numbers for this ratio come directly from the balanced equation. Canceling out the units, we're left with kilojoules, and when we simplify, we should come up with an answer of 2.75 kilojoules. In this next problem, we have the same equation, but we're asked if we have a certain amount of energy produced, we're asked to backtrack and determine what mass of the sodium peroxide reacted. And this can be useful if, if you are talking about, say, a combustion reaction, and you need a particular amount of energy minimum, th this kind of problem can help you determine exactly how much fuel you'll need to burn to achieve that amount of energy. In this case, instead of, instead of starting with a mass, we're going to start with an energy. And so our first step would be to convert from energy to moles. So we're going to need that mole energy ratio. This time the kilojoules will go on the bottom so that they will cancel. And the two moles of Na2O2 will go on top. We need to convert to moles of our, in this case, the final material is Na2O2. So we use that molar mass of 78.0 grams per mole. And simplifying, we should find that we would get 217 grams of Na2O2 that would need to be reacted in order to achieve 300 kilojoules of energy.